so again, one probe on the earth. Now let's see. Okay, 230. Right, that's not right. Welcome back everyone to today's video. Thanks for tuning in. So I've got a couple of interesting videos on this one. Interesting job, sorry, I should say. So the first one was off the back of another video where I'd, what was it? It was the one where someone had moved a boiler after having done a conversion and we had to reconnect the flow and return. So I went back to do that job. After that, I had a couple of other breakdowns. So they were all quite interesting ones and got Dennis involved in some bits as well this time. He's starting to pick up a bit more as we go along. So we'll see how we get on. But yeah, other than that, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And this neck light, if you guys do breakdowns, servicing and stuff like that, it's honestly, it's a game changer. So it's 350 lumens. I'm not going to blind you guys, but yeah. It is pretty bright. You can angle it in, out, up, down, swivels up and down and everything. So it's a decent light. If you guys are interested or if anyone wants one, head over to Unilight. Use my code UNCLE. You'll get 25% off whatever the current retail price is. And I think they're still doing some mystery gifts as well. So with any purchase over a certain amount, you will get automatically a mystery gift as well. So if there's a couple of bits that you want, you can use the code. You get 25% off your whole order. Plus you get a mystery gift. Or if you just want to bag yourself one of these, go ahead and uh, grab them for yourself as well. I'm going to be putting a few links to some of the other jobs that are linked to some of the jobs in this video. So if you want a bit of a background story, head over to those videos, have a watch of those as well. And then these videos will make more sense. But enjoy and I'll see you on the next one. Right, welcome back to this job. You might remember it from back in December. We kind of did some investigation. I don't know, I might just latch it on as one video. So it says I'm coming back in this from New Year to December. But yeah, whenever this video drops, it will drop. The job was, combi boiler was put in. Uh, it was a conversion. The old heat only boiler was there where Mohammed is. And they moved the boiler across to here. But what we need to do is we need to get the primary pipe works, which is up in that ceiling space where Mohammed just cut it out. And then we need to bring that pipe work along this window frame and then latch onto there because currently what's happened is the heating pipe work has just been teed onto these radiated pipe work and we've got some issue with circulation there's only two radiators which aren't working so it's not a massive issue but it's an issue nonetheless so we need to get resolved we were thinking of taking the pipes from the floor upstairs but it's all laminate flooring like this so to take that off upstairs is going to cause even more disruption so we're not doing that we're going to be Basically, taking them down from here. I think he's found the pipes already up here. Yeah. So we've got the primaries exposed there. Is it just those two stubs? Yeah, this, this is the returns. Yeah. And this is the flow in it. Okay, cool. These were teed off together. I'll show you the pictures, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know if we went to tee them off again. Because this is going towards the airing cupboard, isn't it? Yeah. And then this is probably for the radius, isn't it? That would be, yeah. We'll have a look at the pipe and see where it's running. Yeah. Um, so we need to. So one of them you would have been the... in that small room, yeah? Where yeah. Where like um, a little box section of pipes, so we can open it up and we're going to move some pipes around. You can... we'll, yeah, we'll have, we'll have a look at the old pictures cool. and then we'll see what we need to... Oh, we might need to link something back up. Back a bit more, but this is just yeah. There, yeah, yeah, we'll cut that back a bit so we've got a little bit more room there as well. Cool, so make some progress. Found the pipes already. We just need to see which, we, which ones we need to link out, if we need to link any out, or if we can keep some of them capped and just bring them straight across. So... I'm just going to do that. I'm going to start taking this bit of boxing off. Dennis is going to try and make himself useful. What are you going to do, Dennis? He's going to help out. He's going to try and help out. So let's try and get this job done. There's three of us, so it shouldn't take us too long because I've got more breakdowns to do afterwards. So let's crack on. Right, making a bit of progress. So we've identified what's what. I'll go upstairs and show you in a minute as well. This pipe here is our cylinder return. This is our heating return. And that's our primary flow. So we just basically need to take that and this, bring them down around onto the flow and returns there. This pipe, which has got a lot of movement on it, I'll show you upstairs. 
So this was, remember when I came and I had a look at the area and cover trying to figure out what's what. So now we know what that pipe is. It is, let there be light. Let's try again. Let there be light. There we go. Right, so that is basically this pipe here. So if I'm, uh, Mohammed, Mohammed, um, shake that pipe again. So he's going to move that pipe. I want to see, like, give it, pull it. Yeah, yeah, put, give it a proper pull. It was moving before. Yeah, there you go. All right, wicked. Yeah, so that's our cylinder return. So basically, that confirms that we don't need to do anything with that pipe. That can stay capped. We've identified our primary flow and our heating return. We just need to now bring that to where the new boiler is. So we have a plan. Let's execute. Okay, so that's our flow pipe running across there. And I need to get onto this flow pipe here. And there's a few snots there, so I can't really cut any higher. I'm gonna try and sweat this off, but I reckon there's probably still gonna be a bit of water in here. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna drill a little hole in this end cap here. If there's any water in there, that will then drain out, and then I should be able to sweat this off, clean this up, and then get a press fitting onto there. And that can then, this will disappear up there. And then that I can just elbow, bang, straight onto there. That's the plan anyway. Right, so we have the flow pipes done. So connect onto to there, brought that round, and that's going around to there and onto the flow. So that bit's done. And the two vertical sections that were going on there onto the radiator, Mohammed actually had a good idea to put a couple of drainers there because there's no drainers on the system in Europe, did you? Yeah, you said no, no there's no drainers in Europe. So it actually worked out all right because otherwise I was going to think of repiping those two, but can use those as two drain offs, which is good. So all we've got to do now is mimic that for the return, which is going to be that stub over there. So I've just got to figure out what's going to be the best way to take that off as well. Probably from the elbow, sweat that elbow off and then bring it down in front of it and then bring it around into there. And it's going to go there where that bit of vertical pipe's coming up. So we'll move the filter, which was there, to over there. And then there's the old bit of pipe, I think, where was it? Oh, it's there. So that little section will come back in there. And then instead of the elbow going down, it will go elbow up, take off that little bit of button, and then go up and then straight into the return. So I'll work on this bit. Mamma can work on that bit, and then we'll sort of meet up in the middle. Right, we're all piped up, so that's all done, running around there. So what we've done over here, we just cut those two off and put a couple of drain offs down there. So now, flying returns have been properly connected and everything's getting hot. I'm not going to go around all of them. My thermal imaging camera battery is about to run low anyway, but that's hot. But the two main ones, everything's getting hot, I showed quickly, look, hot. Hot, hot, I'll show you upstairs quickly. That little circuit of pipes in there, and that's all getting hot. That one needs bleeding, do that in a minute. That's nice and hot. And now uh, the two most important ones, which were the problem ones. There we go. That's getting nice and hot. And the bathroom towel row is also getting nice and hot. So, job's a success. Just goes to show the importance of making sure you get your pipe work correct because it can cause a lot of problems. It was a major problem, it's only two rads, but it's still, it required another visit for us to rectify it. But yeah, it's done now. And I think Miles learned a valuable lesson. <laughs>
we all make mistakes, but as long as we learn from them, I, I've, I've made some mistakes in the past. In fact, if, you, if you're not already subscribed to him, go and subscribe to Dan, Central Heat King. He's going to be doing these videos where he wants to get other people on and talk about the horror stories. I've got a cracking horror story of mine for when I went first self-employed. I'm not going to say it on here. I don't want to ruin it. But in fact, well, it might still come on Dan's before I put this video out. But if you haven't already, I'll put a link in the description below. Go and have a watch of that video to see my big... Catch you soon. Okay, so I'm at the next one. There was a leak coming from this, was it a main combi HE or a Potterton Eco HE, which is the same thing. I'm guessing it was somewhere down, down there, but there's nothing actively leaking at the moment. But from this, having a look inside the boiler, it's never been maintained. I mean, that left-hand block is crusted over. And if I hazard a guess, let me try and get my camera in there. It's going to be that bypass connection there, which is where it's leaking from because it's a little bit wet there, but it's not actively leaking. So we've got the bypass connection that's leaking. This left-hand block looks like it's seen better days. That connection there looks like it's seen better days. I mean, I've just got off the phone to the landlord and I've asked them, have they had this boiler ever maintained or anything or looked after or serviced? No. What do you expect? It's a 12, 13 year old boiler, not been looked after. And this is what happens when you didn't look after your appliances. Just like anything, you don't get your car serviced, it gets messed up and then you cry about it. But I'm still here to change a few TRVs as well. So, well, lock shifts to TRVs. So we've got one, two, three. So we're going to get those done. I'm not going to charge the landlord for the boiler call out because I'm here to do, I was meant to hear, I was meant to be here to fix the boiler and do the TRVs, but all I've done with the boiler, I've just opened it and looked inside and said, this is the problem. So I'm not going to charge the landlord for that because I'm still here to do another job. So we'll get that done. Then it's going to have a go at changing some TRVs. So I'm going to drain the pressure out of the system and then get Dennis to start changing some TRVs. Let's hope he doesn't flood the place. Please, Dennis, don't flood the gaff. No, no, no. What do you guys think? Confident? Let's find out. Right, boiler is on. One, two three TRVs all done. I did that one and I've got Dennis to do the other two. I didn't film me doing it because you guys have seen me do TRVs and I didn't want to film Dennis because I didn't want to put him in, put him under any unnecessary pressure because it's the first time he's doing something like this because you, as you guys know, I don't drain the whole system down. I just take the pressure off and do it sort of semi-live. So there's still a little bit of water there, but it's not under pressure. So I got him to do it that way. So I want him to concentrate, make sure he doesn't panic. Showed him how I did one. You just There's going to be water coming out. You put a plumb tub underneath it, control the water. As long as you've got the situation under control, it's fine. You can take your time. It's when you panic is when things go wrong. Nice one. So he's got those two done. Everything's getting hot. We're out of here. Uh, right, let's have a look. So we're at this breakdown where... Here we go, look, the boiler's not doing anything. All right, let's uh, get the case off and see if we've got power we're going to. Well, let's just do a quick check with this. Okay, so we've got power going to it, but board is not doing anything to me. That's pointing to a board issue, but let's just get it on and check that we do have 240 going to the PCB. Right, let's have a look at the incoming terminals to the board. So, earth. Right, nothing. Oh. Nothing. So, that power that we were getting is probably just stray voltage. That's why it's always important to check with a proper voltage, voltage tester rather than just the stick. 
because if I put the stick on there now, that might still light up. That's strange. Now it's not even lighting up before it was. Right, let's go and see what's going on. Ah, uh, oh, okay. So the RCD here is tripped. All right, let's put that back on. And now let's go and check again. If we've got power going to the boiler. So now, I think that's meant to be the spur. There's no light in there. Right, let me get you guys back on here so we can see what we're doing. All right, so again, one probe on the earth. Now let's see. Okay, 2.30. Right, that's not right. Got 2.30 between neutral in earth and live in neutral. And we've got 9.8 volts between live and neutral. Okay, so there's an electrical fault here. We've got broken neutral somewhere. Because there's definitely power going to it. But there's a broken neutral. Right, so that's going to need a bit more investigating. Right, so there isn't a 3 amp fuse spur. There's a 20 amp double pole switch here, which is spurred off of this socket. And because I can't get to the wiring center, I don't know if you guys remember this one from before. The wiring center is behind that toilet, so that's a false wall which you then have to pull the whole toilet out to get to the wiring center. So I thought it was there, but I thought before they do all that, let's have a look at where the main supply is coming from. So I'm still getting the, the broken neutral symptoms on that and coming off of this. So it's actually even where it's coming into the socket, still getting 230 on there. So that means there's a bigger problem here than just the boiler and I reckon that's what's probably caused the boiler to go as well. Well, this is going to be a PCB fault because when you've got power going to it and it's not doing anything, that's going to be a board fault but there's no point changing the board today or tomorrow whenever until the electrical stuff is sorted. So I've got the board on the van but there's no point in changing it now because it's just going to blow again, mm. potentially. So we need to get the electric sorted first, then change the board and get it all up and running.